You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program, a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew. Welcome to a very special episode of the Write Project podcast. Today, we've got a host of authors on to answer one of the most frequent questions that's asked of any author. We're asking them, do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each book? And today to answer, we have on a variety of different authors. First, Brad Dunn, author of After Dark Vapors. Uh, I wouldn't say I'm trying to build, like... Not like a universe like the MCU universe we're saying, but I definitely want um, like a kind of... Thematic connection. Yeah, maybe thematic or like... like I, w- I would like someone to read my books and think... He's like building on ideas, on like uh, themes. It's, it's to the point that it's like I'm not just writing the same book over and over again, but it's like a, a kind... It, it makes sense together, but they're different. I guess uh, like a kind of di- dynamic but coherent body of work, I guess That's is fair. what you're saying, you know? Yeah. Um, I think that happens on so like you can bring it out, but even if people aren't building a connected universe, like say I did or anything like that, right, yeah. there are themes that are going to play through. Like you can't help but like if you read Hemingway's stuff in order, if you read Faulkner's stuff in order, if you read Fitzgerald's stuff in order, mm. you can't help but see like a progression of like oh here and here and yeah, then here and definitely. then here. Yeah, um, I like the the book I'm working on now. There's definitely like thematic overlays for sure. Like I'm still kind of like exploring similar ideas, but like in a different um, from a different angle. And obviously, like I said, like it's going to be a totally different. Uh, setting and, and it's not going to be a connected universe but I hope like people can kind of see like the, the thread of like the where like the ideas are going cool I think if that makes sense it makes perfect sense thank you very much next up we have Bridget Canning author of the greatest hits of Wanda Janes and editor of what's written in the ladies do you want each of your books to stand on its own or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each book ideally i want everything to stand on its own but i think people will find connections between them even if it's just thematic connections it it just happens by way of it's written by the same person yeah, and I think I think with every every most authors' body of work, people do find certain. Uh, like I remember reading, I used to read a lot of Margaret Lawrence, and like every 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 protagonist is like a woman who really likes smoking. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm gonna guess Margaret Lawrence really liked smoking. Yeah, I think she died of lung cancer actually. Oh, that's sad. Um, so I think I think that you could you you try I think you would try your best, but you do have a voice and you do have things like you know, like techniques that you fall back on. So you can try for things that are original, but I think people are going to find that kind of you know seed through everything. Um, it was actually a really interesting question. Uh, I did a I did a playwriting course with Robert Chafe this winter. Okay. And he said he was telling us about this exercise he did. I think it was Judith Thompson. And she got everyone in the class to write down, like, the moment in their life, like, like but kind of the catalyst moment of their life. Like, what is something that happened in your life that you know, changed your life and shaped your life? And basically, they had to put that in, uh, you know, a phrase and kind of hang on a desk. And she said, that is what is going to shape all of your writing, for, like, whether you like it or not. Interesting. Um, so, you know, Robert was talking about, you know, coming out of the closet and, um, and the fear that he had when he was younger of, you know, uh, telling his family and friends he was gay. And so his was, you know, um, being true to yourself is always worth it. Is, and, that, and that is kind of, and he feels that that is within, you know, his, that, that shows up in his writing repeatedly. I did, uh, uh, mine was about, well, my, my father died when I was 13 and like, you know, my entire life changed afterwards. And so I had written something about that, and Robert was like, oh, you were at the whim of change. I was like, oh, my God. Because I do tend to write about um, the, the other novel I have is the novel begins at uh, when the protagonist is 11 years old, and she she overhears the conversation, 
and realizes that her family has been lying to her. Um, so it's not about the moment. It's not about the event. It's about the aftermath. So, so Robert said, oh, yeah, you, you, you write about the aftermath. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> maybe i do um so i think yeah like you like like i said like i think you try for something uh original but i think we all kind of as i said use the same processes that do connect do create connections whether they're unconscious or not i think that's a really great thing of your work is to write about the aftermath that's that's really interesting like I'm, I'm a big structuralist, and I not all books fit like a, a set structure, and I know that. But I always like in my head make them fit. You know what I mean? Like that's part of my reading of it. So like if I was gonna do that with 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 yours, it'd, it'd be like the thing that's typically the the break into Act Three, like the high octane stuff. That's your end of act one and then the rest of the book is dealing with the fallout of that which i really like that's cool because you don't usually see what happened next you know mm -hmm. like usually the end of act three is just or the act three after the big climax is just a few pages of cleanup whereas with you that's the point and i i really enjoy that about your work thank you thank you very much Next up, we have Paul Carberry, author of the Zombies on the Rock series from Engine Books. So do you want each of your books to stand on its own, or are you trying to build, like, a larger universe of work? Uh, for the most part, a larger universe. I, do, I don't ever plan to end the Zombie on the Rock series. I always want to be able to revisit it. You want to leave it open in case, even if you did want to stop writing it for a while, you want to leave it open so that you could return to it. Exactly. So I want to leave it open, but be able to take a break. Mm. So uh, I do want to have like maybe one or two novels that it's just that one novel has nothing to do with anything else. Uh, probably my shark novel is my big idea. It's going to be fun. Just, although it's set do you have a title movie, for that yet? Uh, Carcaridon. Okay. Yeah. So that's the genus name for uh, Carcaridon. Nice. Is, uh, like there's Carcaridon, Megalodon. Carcharidon, uh, Carcarius, which is the great white. Oh, wow. So they're the two Carcharidon sharks. Like, they're very similar. Nice. There was a third. They're ex well, two of them are extinct. Wow. But I can't remember the name of that one either. Cool. All right. Well, yeah. I'll look forward to that. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Aaron Vance, editor-in-chief of Engine Books and the editor of the From the Rock anthology series. When you're writing, do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a larger body of work with interconnections and stuff? You're still working on your first one, so that's a bit much of a question. Uh, I mean, I have two series in my head. Um, so one of them, I wrote a short story for Sci-Fi on the Rock, the anthology set in that world. Yeah. So I really want to write that. One That's day. true. You actually are a published author. You've been in uh, several short story books, and you you have a poem that's in a textbook. I do have a poem in a textbook. Yes. It's a thing that definitely happens. You get royalties every once in a while from that, don't you? Um, I mean, every once in a while, they, I don't want to say buy me out, but yeah, I guess I get royal. Yeah, royalties. They, that's royalties. Yeah, that's royalties, yeah. Yeah. Happened twice. That was yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like, I'm real happy we're bringing up this. <laughs> yeah, it's a poem that I wrote when I was 16 and angry about being edited. Yeah, that thing. Um. I feel like we, we, whenever you were, whenever we do like a collection of your stuff, that needs to be in there because it's like the person who became the editor in chief of Engine, her first published work. And probably the most read of your of your work. Yes, by thirteen that, and fourteen year olds all over St. John's. Yes, is <laughs> is like a book about editing. I mean, it is, but my favorite thing about that poem is no one understands that that's what it's about. Um, like they don't seem to understand that the point I was trying to make with that poem was that sometimes editors will change what you actually want to say. Yes. And that's something I try very hard as an editor to not do. I try to tell the story that people want to tell. Yep. And so I guess it all kind of works out. But the thing that gets me about that poem is they're like, so how do you feel about bullying in high school? And I'm like, that's not what this poem is about at all. Yeah. But uh, we were going back to about if my works were interconnected or not. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, yes, I think I have two series very separate in my head and they're... One series is going to be interconnected, and I'm in my head. 
That's like the engine one. Okay. In my head, I call them the Port Haven peeps. Okay. And then the other one is, I call that my flying ship story. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love the flying ship story, but I like given uh, being a child of the 80s, I can't help but picture like the airships from Mario Brothers. Um, that's exactly what it is. Wonderful. Yeah. It's, um, basically it's set in the, uh, a hopeful future. Yeah. It's a hopeful future and... Instead of everyone killing each other, they just decide to move up into the atmosphere. So they have cities based in the atmosphere with, like, oxygen, and they figured it out. Cool. And, like, healthy energy. And there's this one company said in North America, and they decided they were kind of rich and really classy. So they have these giant galleons. Mm -hmm. And they fly about, I think I have it about, how many? I think, I actually figured it out, like, math-wise with my sister because she's a marine architect, like how high in the air they can fly and how fast they can fly. And it's about a crew who, who flies one of these galleons and they get roped up and... Um, misadventures. Misadventures. Um, robot animals. Yay. Terrorism. Fun. Not a good... <laughs> that part's not so hopeful. But the rest of it's really a plus. Fun. Yeah. Sounds good. I hope so. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Tenneth Frost, best-selling author of the Immortal Solus series. Tenneth, do you <coughs> want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each one and that kind of thing? At the moment, I'm writing a series. Uh, so each book does stand on its own as a story, but they should be read in sequence. So in that way, the series will form its own body of work. I hope that... as I do other projects in the future, they will either fit into the same universe or at least have something that carries over in terms of the mood of the books or the themes or the genre so that people will be comfortable jumping from one to the next. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ali House, author of the Segment Delta Archive series, as well as a frequent contributor to the From the Rock collection of anthologies. Do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with, like, interconnections between each book? Well, if I wanted each book to stand on its own, I probably wouldn't have written The Fifth Queen. Yes. Um, but I would like people to be able to read one book without having massive questions about the one before it. So I like that they're interconnected, but I also don't want people who pick it up for the first time, not realizing that it's a second in a series, to think like, oh my god, I'm missing so many things. I think that's important too, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so yeah, like right now I'm kind of trying to build a body of work, because now that I've got the second book out, I'm thinking of ideas for like a third and a fourth and a couple of more, um, but I honestly, I do love a good standalone book that you just read, and it's over, and you can reread a hundred times. Yeah, I agree. I agree on both. I love a series, and I love an, uh, a stand on its own. It's it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Peter Foote, owner of Fiction First Used Books, the founder of the Genre Writers of Atlantic Canada page, and frequent contributor to the From the Rock anthology. When you write, or maybe even when you read, if you want to answer it that way, it's up to you. Uh, do you want each book to stand on its own, or do you prefer when there is a large body of work between connections with connections between each book? Um, well, since I've never written a, a, a novel, it's kind of hard for me to answer, though my current project is a trilogy, which seems kind of odd for somebody who's never written a novel before um, to to do something that is a part of a trilogy rather than a standalone. See, you um, think that, but that know, is the common when it comes to genre. I get everything that comes into the submissions file. I'm like, it's like, it's the first of a trilogy. I'm like, not yet. It's not. <laughs> yeah. 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 You, you need, uh, you need the complete arc there. Yes. Yeah. But, but sorry, uh, continue. Yeah. No. Um, I think there's a common theme with a lot of my short stories. Like I said, they're, they're usually a little more, oh, depressing or emotional or um, they deal with loss, uh, whether it is physical loss or psychological. So there's, I, I do feel uh, there's a bit of a, I do have a bit of a style in that regard, um, which what that says about me as a human, I'm not really sure, but um, 
I'm going to let somebody else decide that. That's but, okay. Uh, I uh, my my stuff deals with a lot of loss as well. I think that's a, a, a like not a bad avenue to go down. Now, I think a person should really write to their strengths and read to their loves. Yeah, that's fair. That's a nice quote. Um, for a nickel a month, you own it. Okay, sounds good to me. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Gareth Mitten, contributor to About Face and Dystopia from the Rock. In general, and you can approach this as a reader or as a writer, whichever, but in general, do you want each book to stand on its own, or do you prefer when there's a large body of work with connections between books and a series and stuff like that? Mm, that's that's really interesting. Um, I don't I don't lean either way. I think there's there's a place for both. I, I really appreciate the kind of episodic sort of world that we've entered into these days that you know like through i think sort of the ebooks and you know um sort of indirectly kind of netflix <laughs> because we, we we this kind of idea that something kind of big and epic can be can be long can be episodic i think is really interesting and i think we're seeing a lot more of that and i think that's really cool and you know you've kind of seen that for years in sort of comics and graphic novels uh, I read, you know, I'm really interested in, in that medium as well. And it's just brilliant when you kind of follow something like, you know, Neil Gaiman's Sandman series. Yeah. And you kind of go through that and, you you know, comic by comic. And then at the end of it, you know, it, it comes out as a set. And it's just this, this huge body of work that's all interconnected and has such beautiful development of characters that you can't, you can't do in a single work you know what i mean um that that's really something very special and deep um but uh, equally you know i've i've written a science fiction novel that i feel is a standalone piece and i'm really proud of it it's an eighty thousand word relatively short novel and that's all it should be like, in this it, economy that's no longer short yeah i guess i guess i'm i'm again, seeing more I'm and more like, releases from even the the big the bigger publishers even beyond locally that are just breaching 50k because oh, wow. yeah because you as sad as it is not to get into the industry talk but they still charge the same amount like they say like oh 20 to 25 dollars for a novel and the economy's not terrific so if you can save money on page count then you you're making more per book sold which is really sad but I'm seeing more and more shorter novels greenlit than I was ten years ago. Interesting. That's really interesting. I, I never, I didn't realize that. And that'd be more of a novelette, wouldn't it, or a novella? What? what uh, the the, the official like standard to... is like forty to fifty. And that's when you've breached novel kind of thing. But that's a short right. novel. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, notwithstanding, you know, but I, I, I think the, there's something to be said. And again, I kind of go back to, I, I keep going back to movies, but they're probably a bigger influence on me, if I'm quite honest. No, you, know, fair. Um, you know, something like, but I think Alex Garland um, is phenomenal. I, some of his recent stuff, like, a, you know, Alex Garland wrote The Beach way back, which became like the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, which I absolutely love. And I love the book as well. Okay. <laughs> I think the movie was fantastic. I am not familiar um, with the book or the novel. Or the, oh, no, the movie or the, the, the novel. Oh, oh, go and do both. Okay. Yeah, because they're, it's really well worth your time. You'll, you'll enjoy it. All right. Um, and in more recent years, Alice Garland did uh, Ex Machina. Oh, okay. Right, so I think I'm pretty sure Alex Garland wrote Ex Machina. Don't quote me on that. Certainly was director or producer or something on the movie. Now, I look at Ex Machina... And that, to me, is a standalone story. Like, you know, you might... I, I, and there was talk about a sequel, and but at the end, I don't really want to ruin the ending for anyone who didn't see it, but... Yeah. <laughs> it ends in a way that you could definitely see a sequel coming, but I don't really want there to be a sequel, because the only way you can do a sequel is to go bigger and have more robots and more explosions... But sequels as, can be difficult when the first is very self-contained. 
Right, and also very understated and and uh, minimal on characters, and I, I I actually really appreciate those kind of works where it's you know minimal characters but really strong concept and really good suspense. I think that is a really a nice a nice kind of tight package like that is really really cool in its own way too. That makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Okay. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have John Hass, author of The Reluctant Barbarian. John, do you want each book or story to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each story? Oh, I do like when I read an author and they make a little reference to another book, and you're like, oh, they're in the same universe. I like that. Say, Um, like The Dark Tower? Yeah, 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 where the, 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 what's his name, the, um, the, the, the main bad guy in the Dark Tower, he shows up in, uh, Randall Flagg? In, yeah, yeah, as Randall Flagg in, in The Stand. Yes. And, uh, and that's just, it's a cool little thing. And I remember reading, um, Tommy Knockers, uh, by Stephen King, and they're, they're, Two of the characters went to the next town over, and whatever they were doing, they look over and they see a clown looking at them out of the sewer. Yes, which is horrible because it means Pennywise lived. Yes, yeah, oh, good point, yeah. Yep. So, um, I do like that, um... The, the books I've written so far, they are three stories in a trilogy, so they are kind of, they, they are all in the same world. Uh, the next thing that I write, the next book that I write will be outside of that trilogy, and I'm not entirely sure if, I, if I'm going to consciously try to tie them together or not. In some ways, I've always thought that, like, Everything by a writer is connected in some way, even when they try to distance themselves from it. Like, I can always see thematic connections. There's only so many different things inside one human, you know? Like, it's all coming from their own personal experience. Even if they're wildly different, I can still say these are all facets of John Hass, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, you are the connecting tissue. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, Thank you very much. Next on the line, we're pleased to have artist and photographer Kit Sora, the visionary artist behind Kit Sora, the autobiography. Is each of your photos meant to stand on its own, or are you sometimes telling a story? Are you trying to build a body of work with connections between the different things? Nine chances out of ten, they are a standalone thing. Um, I'm sure if you go back and look through a couple of the different projects, you'll see... Well, like, Weightless was definitely a continual theme. Wait, yeah, I I barely... I I don't really count that towards the stuff that I'm doing now, because that was definitely a standalone thing, and it kind of did tell a story. It was sort of like a story of ups and downs and struggles and all that fun stuff. Um, The more recent stuff, and by recent I mean from, like, 2017 onward, has been... Call me and call and be. Like, generally when I'm going into doing a shoot, it's just one idea based on one random thing that either happened the week or struck me in the week. Um, but there are a lot of common themes and a lot of common grounds and locations, because I only use, like, five. Um, so, I mean, you know, if, if you try hard enough, I'm sure you could stitch together, you know, a story or a mini-series within a series. Yeah. Um, pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. I think some one of the writers for your book actually did that. They, he took two photos of yes, you as a fairy yes, yes, yes. and made yep. a part A and a part B yep. to the story. It's easy when I've got the, you know, I reuse wigs and wings and ears. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have Candace Osmond, best-selling author of Dark Tides and Killer Me. Candace, do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each and every book? Huh. I definitely like each series to stand on their own. Um, so, like, the Dark Tide series, there's four books, but each one picks up exactly where the other one left off. Like, it's there's no crazy amount of time that passes between each one 
Um, but then as a whole, when you look at, I think I've got like 12 or 13 different books out now and comprised of different series and that kind of thing. I do have very, very discreet connections to all of them. So okay. you can, that they're all written in a world that I've like in my brain, <laughs> um, but they're very separate from each other. So for example, the, the Iron World series, which is about uh, fairy folklore, I have one of the fairy uh, species is a water siren. So in my mind, I created a water siren that is literally made of water. They're just a body of water that can form into like a human form, but they're still water. I then took that and used that same creature in the Dark Tide series, but I don't ever say that they're from the other series or anything like that. It's just very something minor that readers who've read all my books would probably pick up on it, but that's really about it. Okay, that makes sense. I love yeah. it. Instead of the Dark Tower, it's the Dark Tides? <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, Stephen King kind of does that. He does, he does. Yeah. Loose connections. Loose, yeah. very loose. Like, sometimes yeah. not even in yeah. the same universe connections. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have independent author Jeff Kelland. Do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a, a body of work with connections between different books, if you're writing more than one book at all? Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly uh, not so much into series and things like that in fiction. Um, I've, I've, I really want them to stand on their own because I have so many different ways I want to go. Uh, for instance, uh, I have this fiction book now called uh, Grace Ungiven that's out there. And I have a manuscript for a children's book ready to go, trying to decide which way I'm going to go uh, in terms of independent publishing, hybrid, or whatever the case may be. And I'm also putting together an audio book of uh, editorial essays. Um, so th these are three completely different areas, so naturally I would want them to stand on their own. Again, uh, my age uh, has a lot to do with it. If I was 20 or 30, I could see myself getting into series of fiction and that sort of thing. But uh, you can't do it all, and uh, I've got to sort of pick my, pick my battles at this point in the game. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Ellen Curtis, who serves on the Wannell board and is the author of the Infinity series from Engine Books, as well as the editor of the From the Rock anthology. So do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a larger body of work with a mythology, like a series, preferably? I... I prefer having a mythology and and a flow because I don't think I, I don't think stories like should necessarily be summed up in a perfect bow. I really hate that like when that happens because I think as humans we're all like we're always encountering situations where we have to make our peace with something being unresolved. And I think playing into this formulaic like, oh, and they had a happy ending or like, oh, everyone dies at the end. <laughs> like yeah. I find it's kind of set us up as a society for not being prepared to deal with a lack of closure. Maybe, yeah. Especially when it comes to television, because television every... Well, back in the day, like before, say, 1995, especially sitcoms, like everything has to be wrapped up and returned to status quo. Mm -hmm. There was a whole series of arguments based on the rise of sitcoms, like the Disney Afternoon-style sitcom, or TGIF, I should say, and how they were giving, like, the kids that were growing up on them, like, an unrealistic expectation of when that things would all be back to normal by the end of 30 minutes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Next on the line, we have tie-in collective author Susan McDonald. This is an odd one, because I think I already know the answer for you, but maybe not in the future. Uh, Susan McDonald, do you want each book to stand on its own, or are you trying to build a body of work with connections between each book? Well, for this particular series, the Edge of Time series, um, it, it, the first book is a, could be a standalone, um, and it was written so that it potentially could be, because you never know if if anybody's going to pick up the other ones. Yeah. The um, but ideally, th the books are quite connected now, so um, ideally, it would be that that body. But the next book that that I send out, who knows what that's going to fit in. That's fair. So. No, that's perfect. 
All right. Well, thanks for coming on again. For all of you, we'll be here again next week at 4.30 Newfoundland time or online at chmr.ca. Please tune in and we'll talk more about writing culture in Newfoundland.